Hello everybody, welcome back. Sorry for taking so long to make this video, but uh, we're gonna start doing the hinge joint. So right here, this cube, it's actually a door, so let me name it correctly. Now this door is this one right here. I just added a material, this is the regular default cube, and it just has a, a box collider. So what we're gonna do uh, to make this into a door is we're gonna add the hinge joint. So, uh, we go down to physics and then all the way to hinge joint we'll click on that and it will add a rigid body for us and then we get this hinge joint component now to edit the hinge joint as you can see we can click on this thing right here and it'll show the angular limits so right now it could actually spin all the way around uh, before I show you that I'm gonna keep going uh, for connected body so let's say you have a door uh, frame around this door um, you would add the, uh, the connected rigid body to it so it would automatically connect the anchor for you there's also anchor anchor is the one that's on the door so let me click this so now I could actually move this anchor around depending on where I want it uh, I'm gonna leave it in the middle for now cuz that's about where I'm gonna want it so somewhere around there and then axis that's the this axis right here so as you can see it is facing that way now let's say I put this to zero and then I put the next one to one. Now, as you can see, it is pointing up and that's pretty much the way we want it. So this circle right here is pretty much how the door will move. So it will move in this circular way. So um, sort of like this in the Y, as you can see. Now let's say if we had this uh, access to one and have this to zero. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna actually move on the X. Uh, so like this which unless you want it to rotate like that that's how that's not how the door should rotate and then uh there's also the z which as you can see it will rotate like this so just depending on how you want the door to rotate so we want it to rotate like a regular door so we're going to put one and zero always remember all you need is a one and then uh, you know zero on both sides unless you want a special you know angle so it will rotate in that certain angle we could also use a spring so it can have like a spring um, effect so first of all let me let me show you what this does so let me hit play and I'm gonna click over here and as you can see it just spins around and it will continue spinning because uh, we don't have no limits on it and then, uh, so let's say we do an add a limit. We're gonna skip the motor real quick. We're gonna add a limit, and the limit is gonna be from zero to 90. So as you can see, this this little red bar right here, this is where it's gonna start, and it will be able to open up all the way down this, this line, this, and it will end up right here. So let's see this in action real quick. So now, if we click over here, and we open the door. Now, as you can see, I cannot push the door open anymore. And it'll just, you know, go back to the position it was. So, as you can see. Now, if we had a spring, we could add a spring. And then, uh, so when it actually does, let's say, uh, let me show you. It has like a spring effect to it. Yeah, you have to make sure you check the use spring checkbox and as you can see it add, acts as a spring door so when you open it you can open it from this side or when you try to open it from this side it will just spring back so it'll shoot right back to its uh, original position and then uh, there's use motor so if you wanted to actually have something driving this uh, by itself. So let's say we got target velocity of 20 and we got force of one and we hit play. Now, as you can see, the door is actually, uh, right position right, it's actually rotating by itself and it will just keep rotating by itself. You know, you can change the, the force to it and the t target velocity. So. adding force, adding target velocity, it just keeps spinning. So 
Uh, yeah, just uncheck the use motor. Now there for the limits, we covered the limits. Now let's say you wanted to open all the way back. You could also do, you know, negative 90 and 90. And then make sure you use the limits. So now it will be able to open all the way forward and all the way back. If that was, you know, something you were you were looking for, bounciness. Uh, if you wanted to have a bounciness when the the door actually stops at its position, so let's put this back to zero just to show you real quick, and let's add some bounciness. We're gonna add a lot of a lot of bounciness so you guys could you know see the effects. So now when I go to it, nav mesh. But yeah. As you can see, it keeps bouncing because I set it real high. But as you can see, it, it has a little bounce to it. It's not so. See, it bounces back a little bit. Um, yeah, it just bounces. Once it stops, it gives it a little bounce. Now there's also the bounce uh, minimum velocity, so um, it will cause the joint it to per. So this is the minimum bounce, and this is the the actual bounciness. So how much it will bounce, and this is uh, the minimum amount it will bounce, if that makes sense. Uh, contact distance, so here it says, uh, setting this low can cause jittering, but runs fast. Setting high can reduce jittering, but runs uh, the solver more often. So if you want it to be more accurate, you could actually increase this contact distance, but it will perform our calculation so it'll run slower so unless you have very few uh, doors in your scene I suggest that you just you know keep it at zero and then you could have a break force so if there was something connected to your rigid body or even like this that it is not connected you could actually add a break force and when uh, let's say my character goes through it it'll just break through if I can show you real quick so now that we got that, click that, and as you can see, it just broke the door. So now, you know, it's just on the ground. So if you want to add some break force to the doors, and if you don't want it to break at all, you just have to spell infinity. You could also give it a real, real high number, but it is be it's best just to spell infinity. And then enable collision. So if you actually do have a connected uh, a rigid body or articulation body, uh, you could have them collide with each other, but you have to have enable collision on. Uh, there's also enable pre-processing, which it says it helps stabilize impossible to fulfill. So if you disable it, it, it helps stabilize impossible to fulfill configurations. And then uh, there's also mass scale. So this is the scale of the door. Uh, it would pretty much be like the same as this, the rigid body mass. And then there's also connected mass scale. So whatever it is connected to, you could actually manipulate their scale right here as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the hinge joint. Let me see if we have any more time. Well, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up right here. But if you guys have any other more, uh, if any other questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to like answer them. I know this was a little quick, but uh, I'm hoping that you guys understood what I was saying. But like I said, if you didn't, just let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that's pretty much how you make your a door in uh, Unity. If you like this uh, video, if it helped you in any way, if you want to help me out, if you want to help this channel out, leave that like, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. And uh, once again, thank you.